Hi guys, welcome back to In Case of Econ Struggles. Welcome to another micro struggle. Today I'm talking about warp or the weak axiom of revealed preferences. This is going to be a pretty quick video. Timestamps are below if you would like to jump around. Let's go ahead and get right into it and we're going to start as usual with the intuition. So the intuition behind warp is going to be illustrated by this comic right here. So if we think about Bill at a diner, Dave's his waiter, and Bill is thinking about what type of pie to order for dessert. So Dave comes out and he says that the options for today in terms of pie, they've got blueberry pie and they've got cherry pie. Bill thinks for a minute and he says, all right, I would like cherry pie, please. And so what Bill has just done is if we think about revealed preferences, he's revealed to us that cherry must be better than blueberry pie. So then Dave goes to the back to put in the ticket, he comes back and he says, hey, Bill, I'm really sorry. I totally forgot. Today's Thursday and on Thursdays we also have apple pie. So your choices are blueberry pie, cherry pie, or apple pie. Would you like to switch? And Bill thinks for a minute and he says, actually, I would like to switch. I would like blueberry pie. And if you're an observer sitting at a table nearby and you're watching this happen, you're like, what in the world? Like if you're a rational person, why in the first instance would you choose cherry over blueberry? And then all of a sudden this third option comes along and you don't choose the third option you actually switch from being a cherry pie person to a blueberry pie person just because of this third option. Like that makes no sense. Like what the heck, Bill? And so this is a warp violation because we're violating the fact that Bill revealed that cherry was better than blueberry. And then the second instance, we said that blueberry is better than cherry. Like that just doesn't make any sense. So that's the intuition behind warp or the weak axiom of real preference. Let's talk about how we can see a warp violation graphically. So here's what I've done for this warp violation. And this is commonly how you'll see it in assignments and exams and that sort of thing. So what we've got is we've got a budget constraint. I've drawn that in red. We've got a additional or a new budget constraint after the prices have changed in blue. And so what I've done is I've labeled a bunch of points on this graph, including this green point, which is your optimal bundle. And so if we think about this optimal bundle as the cherry pie over the blueberry pie, Let's think about all the other options that were affordable to Bill that he did not choose. So those are the points, let's see, that's F, that's H, that's A, that's E, that's C, and that's G. The reason I'm putting them in red is because they were affordable to Bill under the old prices. And so by choosing this green point, he's revealed to us that that green point must be better than all of these other points. Otherwise, he would have picked one of these other points. And so now, if we have new prices, we have a new budget constraint. If we want to avoid a warp violation, if we do not want to violate warp, then let's think about the points we cannot pick. Well, if we pick F over here, F was affordable before, it's affordable now, so that would be a warp violation. Same thing with H. They were affordable under both prices, but we didn't pick H, we picked green dot. Same thing with A, and same thing with E. Notice that for this point right here, or these two points, point C and point G, they're no longer affordable to us under these new prices. So we can't actually pick G or C under the new prices because it's not affordable to us. Now for B and D, if I pick B, notice that point B was not available to me in the first set of prices. It's only affordable to me now after the price change. And so picking B would be totally fine. Same thing with picking D. That would not be a warp violation because again, those bundles were not affordable to me. So if I'm gonna do some shading to indicate areas that violate or do not violate warp, anything in here that was affordable to me before and is affordable to me now would be a warp violation. So this whole trapezoid thing right here, because again, all those bundles were affordable to me under both sets of prices and I didn't choose any of these bundles, I chose green dot, and so I should not choose any of these bundles if I do not want to violate warp. The other hand, anything in this little triangle looking thing up here would not violate warp. Those bundles were not affordable to me under the old prices and they're affordable to me now. Notice I can't pick my original bundle because it's no longer affordable. Same thing with C and G. So those bundles are no longer affordable to me and I cannot pick them under the new prices no matter if I like them or not. So the areas on this graph represent the areas where I would and would not violate warp. If you've got questions, please put that in a comment below. If you think this makes a lot of sense and makes it easier, also please put that in the comments below. But now let's go on and let's do a numerical example. So here's my numerical example. I'm gonna say on day one, you walk in the store, you've got 20 bucks, prices are each $2, and you buy six of good one and four of good two. 
And then on day two, you walk in, you've got 30 bucks, the price of good one is four, the price of good two is two. You walk in and you get four X1s and seven X2s. So the natural question is, is this a warp violation? So we're gonna do the same thing that we just did graphically, we're just gonna do it with math and with numbers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, on day one, the cost of my bundle that I got on day one was 20 bucks. And if I were to compute the cost of that on day two, where the price of one is four and the price of two is two, then I'm going to be spending $32 because that's gonna be four times six is 24 plus two times four is eight. So that's $32. So notice that that is not affordable to me at my original wealth. And so if I look at day two, if I look at my day two bundle, it cost me 30 bucks on day two, which is exactly how much money I had. And on day one, that would cost me exactly eight plus 14 and that's going to be 22 because my prices were going to be the same of two dollars because i'm just calculating the cost of bundle two on day one and we can see that would have not been affordable to me under day one because i only walked in with 20 bucks so this is not a warp violation because the bundle i picked on day two was not available was not affordable to me on day two and similarly the bundle that i got on day one was not affordable to me on day two because of the price change so this is totally fine this is not a warp violation. And so all I did was basically try to calculate the cost of each bundle on the different days, figure out if it was available to me, if it was in my choice set on the day that I did not choose to buy it. So if this is still confusing, again, please leave a comment below. If you would like another example or another set of examples, also put that in a comment below. But otherwise, if these videos are helping you out, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.